As you can see, there are so many different types of router bits. In fact, I built this cabinet a couple months ago, uh, which was sponsored by Bits and Bits, my favorite place to buy router bits. There's a discount code down below. Um, and I have free plans for these whole layouts if you want to build something like this. That video is linked right here in the corner. Um, but don't let this intimidate you. There's really only a few types of router bits. The first ones I want to talk about are straight bits. Straight bits come in a variety of diameters. You can get them all the way down to the a 16th of an inch up to, I believe, inch, inch and a half, something like that. Uh, there's spiral bits like this one here, compression bits. So this cuts up and down and straight bits. Now this is from like a garbage Chinese set I got and these dull and break really fast and I hate the straight cutters because they just, you get tons of tear out and everything like that. They are a lot cheaper, but I much prefer spiral bits for a couple reasons. One, they clear chips out of the cut. One of the causes of burning when you're cutting a dado or a groove is that you get heat buildup and if sawdust is staying in your groove, your router bit is not only working to cut the material, but it's working against all that sawdust that is compacted in there, which is why bits come in spirals uh, one, you get a sideways cut, so it's like a shearing cut. You get a much better finish, and it clears chips, and it can clear chips up or down. This is a compression bit. A compression bit has an up cutter and a down cutter. You can see this is a down cut, and this is an up cut. And what that's gonna do, one, besides clearing chips, is a down cut is gonna give you a better finish on the top of your board. As you can see, a down cut is gonna force sawdust and the cut going down. This is great when you're doing through cuts or really big grooves and dados because the top of your board isn't gonna get that fuzz that you can get with a router bit. An up cut bit is great for, let's say, shallower passes where you're not going all the way through because it's gonna bring chips up. However, if you are going through, it's gonna give you a better finish on the bottom of the board. Now you can see this is the same size bit, but one cuts up and one cuts down. This is the down cut bit. As you can see, the bit would be spinning this direction and it's gonna force chips down and give you a better finish on top. This is an up cut bit, which means it's gonna scoop chips up, clearing them out of your cut, keeping your cut cooler, um, but you may get that fuzz on the top of your cut. Like I said, you can get a variety of sizes. Uh, I usually only buy quarter inch and half inch because those are multiples of the types of cuts that I usually wanna make. And anything bigger than that to me, you would have to take such shallow passes that it would take just as long to get a cut in the width that you want. Uh, these tend to work best for me. Not saying you shouldn't get bigger, but um, getting a good compression bit for really big cuts and a couple good quarter inch spiral bits, uh, I think can do 98% of anything you're trying to do with a router as far as creating a square groove. The next type of bit I wanna talk about are bearing bits. Now these come in three different types. Bearings on the bottom of the bit, bearings on the top of the bit, or bearings in both locations. Now these are my favorite bits. I've talked about these a million times in my router videos. Uh, up and down cutter, bearing on both sides, most versatile bit with the cleanest cut, no tear out ever, love these things. These are really cool, these small ones with the top bearings, I use these a lot when I'm just trying to get a shallow groove for something, like if I've created a template for our router lift, for example, for the router table we're building that should be coming out very soon, these are great. I've also seen Mike Farrington use these to clean out for the tails, I'm sorry, for the pins on dovetails. Uh, he has a really cool technique for cleaning out waste that, with these that's really neat. Um, these are great bits as well. This is my tiny corner bit, so when I need to get into really small corners, this is great. Uh, and these are great because they have a really big cutter, so if I need to cut along a very tall piece, these are wonderful. Uh, these are my most used bits, I would say, besides roundovers, which we'll talk in a minute, but typically I use these about every project for one thing or another. So. Let's talk about roundovers and edge profiling bits. Now, these are the other types of bearing bits, which again, follow an edge, but these are for edge profiling in one type or another. Now, obviously my most commonly used ones here are my eighth inch and quarter inch roundover, as well as a chamfer bit, but I do use these all. These are a series of roundover bits going from, I believe it's an inch, three quarters, half an inch, quarter inch, eighth inch, and these are great for a variety of applications, including you can make your own dowels in a router table by running the piece over it four times and you can create a circle if you don't have a lathe. Uh, these are chamfer bits for creating a 45 degree corner. 
great edge profile, uh, really makes a project look really cool. Um, and then this is a rabbiting bit that has different bearings. Uh, so you can get different size rabbits depending on the bearing. And this is a bit, I don't use it very often, but when you need it, it comes in really handy. And this is sort of a specialty bearing bit. This is called a rails and styles bit. This is for making raised panel doors in a cabinet. And you can see these bits perfectly match each other. It's the negative and positive of each other for creating the pieces of a door in a cabinet. So edge bearing bits and flush trim bits are my most used bits, uh, followed by straight bits. And then I have some very specialty bits that I wanna talk about that I use occasionally, but are very cool and certainly come in handy. Okay, so here's some of my more specialty bits. I'll go over them kind of quickly because these may not be something a lot of you would use. These are tapered ball nose bits and lettering bits for the CNC. So if you're doing some engraving, these are great. This is like a 60 degree for very fine lettering. And these would be uh, for doing fine raised 3D detail. This is a bull bit. It has a rounded edge you can see. So when you have an inside curve, you can create a bull. Uh, this is a keyhole bit. This would be like the keyholes you see in the back of picture frames. So it will create a recess for a nail or a screw underneath while cutting the slot up above so that you can hang a picture on the wall. This is a slab flattening or spoils board bit in the CNC. You would use this to flatten your spoils board or you could set up a router jig to flatten a slab. Uh, these are a little less obscure, but uh, they're great bits. These are dovetail bits for creating sliding dovetails um, on the router table or with your handheld router. This is a ball nose bit. You could create a rounded groove like the handle for a cutting board or uh, creating shapes on the CNC. This would obviously offer a lot less detail. Now these are my most obscure bits, really cool. You've seen me use this one in actually the router cabinet build. This is a glass drag bit. In fact, all three of these bits, you would operate your spindle at zero RPM. So these would not be spinning. This is a glass drag bit. It has a diamond in the tip for dragging on glass, acrylic, uh, and it's spring loaded so you can set the depth at which it scratches the glass. And it's really cool. I made my logo in the router bit cabinet video as well as Bits Bits logo, and it just came out so neat. This is a vinyl drag bit. This is for cutting leather, cloth, uh, vinyl on your CNC. It's really cool. It's got a spinning little blade in there. It's a carbide blade. Um, and it's, it's really cool for cutting cloth. And this one is really funny. This is for holding a Sharpie. So this is a pen plotter tool. It's also spring loaded uh, and you can use it to draw on your CNC with a Sharpie on any material that you want.